Early morning at Yoga Vidya Gurukul in Trimbak district, Maharashtra, South India. Although the sun has only just risen, the students here at the ashram have already been practicing their asana for the last hour. Days begin at 5, so it's no surprise that lights are out in most of the bedrooms by 10 pm. The life here is focused and simple. The students are here to learn yoga in the traditional Indian style following Swami Satyananda. The landscape in which the ashram lies lends itself well to such a simple lifestyle, recalling Monument Valley in its grandeur, and is a sacred place for devotees of Shiva. people that are used to having a very soft bed, um, hot water from the shower, whenever they want it, continuous supply of electricity. We don't always have that. Yes, we have hot water, which is um, a very, very good because previously we didn't used to have it. Electricity, again, in this ashram, when uh, we came here, there was no power, there was no water supply, there was no world. So all of these things have been built up. And if you spent any time in India, you'll know that there's not always water, there's not always power, even in the middle of a big developing, developed city. So you do need to be a little bit open. It can be a little stressful sharing with three people, um, especially as most people are not used to sharing with strangers. Um, but usually people become really good friends by the end of it. And, you know, there's tears of when people say goodbye because <laughs> they've become so close. Yoga Vidya is a yoga science and Gurukul is a home of Guru. In Indian traditions, there were no schools and colleges previously. Guru's ashramas were there. Guru was the head of the ashram. He was conducting the whole ashram, managing everything and teaching the disciples also. And the disciples are supposed to stay there for 12 years. They are full, full time staying there, eating, living and enjoy, doing some work also for the ashram. So ashram work is carried out by the disciples only. So this was the style of the ashram. A typical day here begins at 5 a.m. with chanting. This is followed by asana and then a well-deserved breakfast. The day comprises of meditation, pranayama, which is a selection of breathing techniques, lectures on all aspects of yoga and yogic philosophy. Everyone's favorite part of the day is yoga nidra, a type of yogic sleep. Nothing gets done by itself. Through Karma Yoga, everybody helps with the general maintenance of meals, cleaning, gardening, and other jobs appropriate to their skills. Gurukul isn't any typical ashram in India. It's a not-for-profit organization staffed entirely by volunteers, including the directors. It is closely integrated into the local community through ongoing charity work with the Saver Fund. The signature of Gurukul is its heart, selflessness and sincerity. In yogic tradition, yogic culture, the first word that is taught is devotion to the Guru and the last, the goal 
of the yogic journey is devotion to the guru you will find it interesting that that is all the yoga tradition wants if you want to evolve yourself it is the devotion that's going to evolve you it is the faith the dedication that is going to make you a better human being that is going to make you a yogic personality guru is the god of creation guru guru is the god of operation and guru is the god of destruction transformation in reality guru is the your consciousness he is the one who can inspire you on a higher level who can inspire your higher intellect who can inspire your emotional personality who can guide your uh, life as a whole as a journey so it's a force it's a energy and the person who reaches that level is called a guru meals are eaten together in the large newly built dining hall having times of the day that are quiet is essential to most spiritual communities and the gurukul is no exception so most meal times are silent diet is a very important part of a yogic lifestyle so caffeine and alcohol are forbidden and the only sugar in the diet is in the form of a delicious unrefined cane sugar also known as jaggery the food is simple and nutritious with indian staples like rice and chapatis served most days um the gateway into to yoga is through the physical side first you need to before you can start practicing the spirituality side you first need to heal yourself and you start to heal yourself by practicing yasnas and also when you look deeper into the hindu religion there's so many sim sim similarities um, to other religions it's very much similar to the teachings of jesus the teachings of buddha um, very similar in the teachings of ancient Egypt as well and um, the, the civilizations from Central America like the Mayans and the Aztecs they all say the same thing just in different ways certain practices for example the, the Surya Namaskar here and the practice in that giving direct praise to the sun every religion says the same thing that everything on earth is made by god the sun was made by god the sun gives us life so we just give him gratitude for the sun for life and if you don't like the words uh, giving praise to the sun you can just use your own words see asanas are defined as the steady and comfortable posture and classically if you look at asanas asanas are meditative postures but then it's very difficult to sit in meditative postures so the yogis they developed and designed other types of asanas so that your body becomes stronger your systems various systems like muscular system blood circulatory system respiratory system endocrine system nervous system they all become strong so that your body can sit and meditate the whole purpose of asanas is to make a very steady and comfortable posture so that your mind can be made steady the mind is not steady the mind moves from one place to another place one thought to another thought one emotion to another emotion thoughts thoughts go very crazy and wild in a wild manner to steady the mind asanas are used because body and mind has a strong connection and asanas talk about that connection if you want to steady the mind you have to steady the body and you see there are five levels of existence as far as human dimension is concerned as mentioned in yoga they are called five koshas pancha kosh the first is the food body the physical body the second is the pranamaya kosh is the energy body the pranic body the third is the mind body the manomaya kosha the fourth is the vijnanamaya kosha that is the knowledge body and the fifth is the anandamaya kosha the bliss body we exist on all these levels but we are mostly aware of our physical body we are definitely aware of our mental body as well pranic body as well but we don't have any control over pranic body and mental body 
once you are maintaining that asana pose once you make yourself steady and comfortable the physical body the physical awareness can be transcended and then the second awareness that you enter into is the pranic awareness and on the pranic level there exists nadis the energy channels that carry the prana and chakras chakras are the energy wheels energy vortexes or you can say junction of nadis the energy uh, points energy centers through which the energy is distributed to various parts of the body and mind so once you make your shoulder stand steady and comfortable then you can slowly start becoming aware of the breathing because breathing goes uh, close to the pranic awareness through breath you control the prana so then the breathing awareness is developed after developing of the breathing awareness you can develop the pranic body awareness and after the pranic body awareness you can develop the meditative aspect of asanas so it's a progress it's a slow progression from physical level to pranic level to mental level and then ending up in the blissful dimension om jayanta kanjana he swaye kushivadana Every evening the community comes together to celebrate the traditional Havan ceremony. Typically the Havan ceremony consists of a small fire as the object of meditation accompanied by chanting. The roots of the yoga are in Vedas and the Vedic tradition the fire is the most important form of energy and the second most important form of energy in vedas is sound and if you see the fire and the sound even the modern uh, physics talks about these two energies at the core of creation the big bang theory 